So welcome back, everyone. How are you doing? Did you meet the students in the last session, or career services, or both? Thank you. Um, nice to see you again. Um, I know you're comfortable in the back row, but if you feel inclined to come and get close, we're happy to have you in the front as well, but uh, as you like. Uh, so this session, which will go until about 12, is uh, our opportunity to introduce you, to just give you a little snapshot of the breadth, depth, richness, diversity of the Osgood JD program. And we have here, and, 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 and I do think that this is, we have, we have uh, just slices, um, uh, deep, rich, and interesting slices, uh, but there's, there's more. We're just going to, uh, we're just trying to tease you with what we have, and there's, as, uh, and there's, and there's a lot more. Um, so we have, and I'll just introduce them to my right, Professor Trevor Farrow, who is the Director of Clinical Education uh, and the Director of the program uh, we call Legal, uh, Ethical Lawyering in the Global Community, which is uh, our first year compulsory course that all uh, first year students, uh, in which all first year students enroll uh, as of day one, or maybe it's day two, uh, of, of your first year. Uh, we think it's important that you be introduced to ethics uh, and the importance of ethics and the importance of ethics in a global context uh, immediately upon arrival at, uh, at our law school. Uh, Trevor also uh, teaches in the area of legal process and, in, uh, is, and, and as I say, is one of our um, distinguished legal ethicists here at the law school. Uh, to Trevor's right is Professor uh, Benjamin Berger, uh, who has joined the faculty from the University of uh, Victoria, and we, wel we have welcomed him from the dark recesses of Lotus Land to the beauty of Downsview. Uh, and, uh, and, and he hasn't regretted a second, he'll tell you that in a minute. Um, Professor Berger, is a leading expert in the area of law and religion, uh, evidence, and criminal law, and as well, constitutional law and human rights, and that's what he'll speak to you about, our programs in constitutional law and human rights uh, this morning. Uh, to Professor Berger's right is Professor Poonam Puri, who is also our uh, distinguished associate dean of research graduate studies and institutional relations. Uh, Professor Puri is widely regarded as one of the leading uh, public intellectuals in the area of business law. She is widely uh, sought after by government uh, and uh, think tanks alike to, for her advice on corporate governance, um, corporate responsibility, uh, and business law. And to uh, Professor Puri's right is uh, Professor Janet Walker, who is uh, as I said previous, in the previous panel, a person near and dear to my heart because she is a, a former associate dean, a distinguished associate dean, uh, who, uh, the kind of associate dean who makes her successor's job easy. And uh, she is Canada's, one of Canada's leading, well, I'd say probably more than that, the world's leading uh, scholars in the area of private international law. And she will speak to you this morning about our offerings on, in the area of international, transnational, and comparative law. And last, and certainly not least, Professor James Sturbopoulos, who, who, when you arrive here on August 29th, will be the Associate Dean, and I call him Lucky James, uh, because it's, uh, and, and you will be lucky, uh, and in very good hands, with Professor Sturbopoulos as the Associate Dean. And he is, uh, again, known, I'm sure, to many of you as one of Canada's leading uh, criminal law uh, scholars and authorities, uh, many years of distinguished legal practice as an advocate and, uh, and also as a teacher and scholar, and he is our director of mooting this year, and he'll speak to you about criminal law and our mooting programs. So, Poonam has to leave early, so Poonam will, um, will start and speak of business law and she will entrust me to answer any questions 
you want to know about business law when she leaves? Absolutely. Not. <laughs> I'm so delighted to have this opportunity to speak with you about our business law offerings and I think it's fair to say that um, Osgood has the broadest and the richest business law program in uh, of any Canadian law school. We have um, a range of courses, seminars, clinical offerings, moots, and um, two very uh, important centers that are focused on business and law. Um, one is the Hennick Center for Business and Law, and the other is called IP Osgood, which is for those of you who are interested or um, curious about, uh, about um, intellectual property, copyright, and patents issues. Um, let me just start by saying that many of the business law, kind of our business law, um, offerings uh, start in, in second year um, and there's a range of foundational courses and you might come at business law from a range of different backgrounds and perspectives based on your undergrad, based on work experience, based on just being curious or actually based on not being interested but you feel like you need to take business law and you might be pleasantly surprised. Um, so there's a range of um, foundational business law courses. One is business associations, the basic corporate law class, there's securities regulation, which is the basic um, public company class, um, bankruptcy, tax, um, and I should say that we have an outstanding tax program where you can actually focus in on tax and, um, uh, and um, specialize in it in some sense. It's called our tax stream. We have commercial law, we have intellectual property courses, and then from those foundational courses, um, in your second semester or at, at, uh, in your second year or in your third year, you can then take um, more advanced um, seminars that focus in on certain areas that um, take certain theoretical perspectives. And so let me highlight some of these seminars to you. Um, advanced securities regulation, building on your securities course, um, corporate governance, uh, advanced bankruptcy, corporations and human rights. Um, uh, there's a couple of other really interesting ones, for example, that were just offered this year. North American Business and Economic Relations was a seminar. The Law of Sovereign Wealth Funds was a seminar that was also very well received. Entertainment and Sports Law is also um, always very, very popular. International Investment Law. So there's a range of seminars that you can take that really... Um, that really, uh, depending on your interest and depending on who's teaching it and depending on how they're teaching it, uh, will be will be uh, terrific um, possibilities. A couple of other um, seminars. Uh, one is Art of the Deal. It's open to law and to business students, where they trend, uh, where they dissect recent transactions and they bring bring, bring in the. Um, the legal professionals like the legal team and the bankers who were involved in those transactions to work in teams with the students. Another seminar is investor protection where we bring together second and third year law students with business journalists so that um, so that we can learn from each other in kind of an interdisciplinary or a multidisciplinary format. Um, so those are some of the range of the seminars that we have. We have a range of business law clinics as well, and Professor Farah will speak to kind of the, our clinical offerings more generally, but let me just highlight the Osgood Business Clinic, and then we have um, a couple of courses which are run as workshops, but again, really, really intense, where you get hands-on experience dealing with clients, dealing with documents, dealing with kind of the, 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 the practical aspects of, um, of, uh, of, of legal analysis and also of working in teams, which is extremely important. Let me, um, and again, Professor Strabopoulos will speak to mooting, but um, to the extent that you're not interested in business law as kind of in terms of doing transactions or deals, um, but on the litigation end of it, there's a range of moots that you can be involved in. There's also uh, one particular one that focuses on corporate and securities law, which is the Davies uh, corporate securities moot. But there are a range of mooting experiences that I think um, you should consider, and Professor Zeropoulos will speak to, uh, to moots more generally. So two last points that I'd like to leave you with. Uh, the JD MBA program, or any of you um, in that program or considering that program? A few, a few are in it, a few are considering it. So it might be something to, uh, to explore um, to the extent that you are interested in um, both kind of a, an advanced business degree in addition to uh, in addition to Osgood's law degree. Um, 
uh, something something to something to think about, and I'll and I'll um, leave that with you. And the other is just the Hennick Center and IP Osgood. Both are flagship centers at the law school, and both uh, provide tremendous opportunities for students to be involved and engaged in research and events. In uh, in, in the case of IP Osgood, they run an IP um, student intensive where there's placements at uh, partner institutions such as IBM, such as the government, um, a range of partner institutions uh, that you that you go to, and then you again take your take what you're learning in the classroom, and you have the ability to uh, to apply it in uh, in a in a real world setting. Um, so I would encourage you to take a look at um, the the possibilities of associating yourself with one of those centers, and what you know kind of the the the, uh, the richness of experience that you can get out of it. So again, in six or seven minutes, there is um, there is uh, I can only give you kind of a very high level of the of the richness of the the range of offerings that we have for students, but I think it is really, really fair to say that we have um, quite a breadth and quite a depth of business law offerings. And for, bo um, for both students who, are, who already know that they're interested in business law, but also for students who think that business law um, is relevant to whatever else they might be doing. And I think at Osgood we teach business law in, in a very broad sense. Um, so not only, not only um, giving you the tools to understand and apply kind of business law rules in a very narrow context, but also to appreciate those rules and the dynamics in the larger political, social, and economic context, which is important for legal advisors to, uh, to recognize. So thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Puri. Um, and as I said, Pres Professor Puri has to leave, uh, but if you do have questions, uh, Feel free to raise them with me at the end, and I won't answer them, but I'll uh, take them down and, and perhaps give you Professor Puri's email address, or you can get into an email exchange, and I know she'd be happy to, to answer them. Uh, turning now, then, to Professor uh, Farrow, who will speak about uh, our clinical and uh, uh, intensive programs. Thank you. I'm delighted to be part of this welcome session uh, with you this morning. I'm going to really talk about two things, clinical programs and a little bit about social justice. So stepping back for a second, one of the things that we have tried to do much more of uh, in law schools generally and in particular here at Osgood um, is this notion of experiential learning, um, learning by doing. Uh, I think it's not uh, a controversial thing to say that most of us in the context of adult learning or any kind of learning do best when we're actually engaged in the process as opposed to simply just listening to it. Um, we do a lot of listening and talking and there's a lot of terrific offerings. Um, but another thing that we do at Osgood that we are very proud of is um, experiential learning. And probably the flagship of that kind of learning is our clinical and intensive program. And it's no exaggeration to say that Osgood is by far the leader in Canada on clinical and intensive programs. We've been doing it longer, we've been doing it wider, and we've quite frankly been doing it better uh, than anyone else. And I don't think that's controversial either. And we have lots of colleagues in other schools that we do stuff with now, and it's a terrific community. Um, and not just here in Canada, but around the world. So what is clinical education? And the idea really is to find ways of learning about the law, not just listening, but by doing it. And so we have a number of programs where students will spend a significant amount of time, a term, perhaps even uh, more than that, at a placement or in a program where you're working with clients, you're working with policymakers, you're actually doing law uh, in a way that's very exciting. And we have a range of those kinds of programs. We have um, an Aboriginal lands, an intensive uh, an environmental program where folks focus in on, on some of those issues. We have two different poverty law clinics, not one but two, different poverty law clinics that have been running for over 40 years. We've got two kinds of programs in the area of criminal law, and my colleague's, uh, colleague, Professor Strabopoulos, will talk about that in a bit, so I, I'll leave that to him. We've got an immigration and refugee intensive. We've got uh, two advanced business law programs. If you're interested in doing business law, you can dive in and work with some practitioners in different areas uh, doing business law. We've got an anti-discrimination program where you work with clients who are um, facing human rights issues. Um, we've got an intellectual property uh, program uh, and we've also got um, a number of other kinds of programs related to that. 
which really makes up a menu of learning by doing opportunities. Um, and I, I should stop now because you'll, I'll just be going on all day about how terrific these programs are, but we hope you'll experiment, get into, and we really do take pride uh, in the programs and, uh, uh, and in doing them well. Before I sit down, the other topic, though, um, that I want to highlight is this idea of social justice. Now, does anyone know what social justice is? Any ideas? What is social justice? Why might any of you come to law school? You may not know, some of you might know, but why might you come to law school? Terrific. You perceive that you may be able to make a difference in your community. And presumably it's a positive difference. Hopefully. Okay. Others. The idea of community and the idea of making a difference. We come to law school, one theory to come to law school is to learn the law. Another big theory of why to come to law school, though, is not just to learn the law as an end in itself, but as a tool to do something else. Um, and this idea of community and the idea of difference, and the idea perhaps and hopefully of a positive difference in the world is really, we think, of as what the end game is, as what we do as lawyers and legal practitioners, to try and do good in the world. Um, and it's not a trite statement. And so how do we do that at law school? Well, it's a deep tradition here at law school, at Osgood, in terms of thinking about the differences we can make in various kinds of communities. Um, and clinical education is one way that you roll your sleeves up and get out into the communities that you might work in, that you want to think about, you want to help, you want to experiment with, and you want them to come and help you in your learning environment as well. And, and the clinical and intensive programs are terrific opportunities to dive into this idea of engagement, not only with yourself, with your colleagues, but with the world around, both here and abroad, in terms of what we do with our legal skills. So I think I'll sit down now. Uh, thanks very much. Here he is, Professor Ben Berger, to talk to you about constitutional law and human rights. Thank you. I made, I can't, I'm standing up this time. La last time in the session just before this, I was the only person that sat, and I was the second person to speak, and I sat, and everyone, and frankly, it made me look lazy. I, I, and so I'm not doing it again this time. I'm standing. Um, how do I give you a, a sense? I'm supposed to talk about constitutional law and human rights, and um, I, it's a, it's an, as a new member of the faculty here, it's, a, it's an honor to do so because part of the, one of the greatest parts of the tradition at Osgood over decades and decades has been the contributions that Osgood students, faculty, alumni have made to the constitutional and human rights areas in Canada and in a broader setting, and I'll say a little more about that, but of course you haven't studied this yet, so how do I give you a flavor of what I think is at the heart of both the field and those traditions? I'm going to read you something just very briefly from uh, a book by one of the great thinkers in Canadian constitutional history, who is also, and I think relevantly, um, a poet. Let me just read this to you. A constitution confronts a society with the most important choices, for in the constitution, will be found the philosophical principles and rules which largely determine the relations of the individual and of cultural groups to one another and to the state. If human rights and harmonious relations between cultures are forms of the beautiful, then the state is a work of art that is never finished. Law thus takes its place in its theory and practice among humanity's highest and most creative activities. I think the nobility of that ambition is very much at the heart, not only of the institution in all of the areas that you'll hear about today and will study, but also very much at the core of the kinds of offerings that you get in our curriculum, a stunning range in areas of constitutional law, of human rights, linking very much with Professor Farrow's description of social justice. So you're going to come to law school, and in first year, you'll take a year-long state and citizen class, and it gives you foundations in basic constitutional law, federalism, the charter, aboriginal rights, lands, title and justice, administrative law, basic questions about the relationship between communities, amongst communities, uh, individuals and the state. But beyond that, there's going to be a number of offerings you have in upper year to delve into specific areas of interest, specific areas within that big umbrella that are of interest. And listen to some of them, okay? In first year, 
you might have an opportunity to participate in a legal theory seminar, thinking about the fabric that stitches together all of these area, areas. But upper year, legal politics, sexuality in the law, jurisprudence, law, gender inequality, law and poverty, disability in the law, discrimination in the law, law and religion. You can look at native rights, at First Nations and the law. Go deeper into Canadian issues, like Canadian federalism, looking more carefully at those questions. But beyond the Canadian, and that's very important, the local, the Canadian, there's also amazing uh, possibilities for looking at these kinds of uh, um, activities of creative art in terms of working together between communities, nations, at the transnational and the global, and Professor Walker will speak a bit more about this, international human rights courses. U.S. constitutional law, you can take a step outside of the Canadian to get a better sense of varieties of ways of arranging this. Globalization and the law, a big theme in Osgood's vision of legal knowledge. And that's just the course offerings. There are academic opportunities to get deeper into things like the Osgood Hall Law Journal, to get connected to important institutes within the faculty, like the Institute for Feminist Legal Studies, which pushes very strongly on questions of constitutional human rights and equality law. And then finally, the experiential, what Trevor was talking a little bit about, some of the ways in which, in this area of human rights, in this area of constitutional law, you're not only engaged with academics, with ideas, with history and philosophy, that's important, but also you can take courses on constitutional litigation, hone your skills in getting engaged in that. The poverty law intensive at Parkdale is very much, I think, about human rights, about the relations between communities and the state. Intensive programs in land, resources, and First Nations governance, right? A hugely important part of our constitutional uh, tradition. And as Professor Stravopoulos will speak to uh, in a moment, there are specific moots that deal with areas of human rights law, the Wilson moot, and you see a couple of our banners for the Wilson moot on equality law, the Kawishkaman moot, which is on the Aboriginal, uh, um, Aboriginal issues and Aboriginal law. So I'll leave it at there. I'm going to try out for you a, um, a slogan, I thought, for recruitment that has been rejected. Osgood Hall Law School will give you the whole seat, but you'll only need the edge. No? No, not, that's why I was rejected. So. I would never, ever say to my colleague, don't quit your day job, um, ever, because he does such a great job at his day job, but we'll keep working on the other uh, sort of media front with him. He's just been here a year, so we, you know, he's still a work in progress. Um, <laughs> Professor Walker will now speak to you about the international, transnational, and comparative law programs. Incidentally, Ben, I didn't think it looked at all lazy of you. I thought you looked rather thoughtful and professorial. Rather? Thoughtful, okay. professorial. Oh. Anyway, thank you so much. How much time do I have? Not enough. Not enough. Let me start by asking you all a question. How many of you know what you want to do with your law degree when you leave? A few. A few. How many of you are not sure? A lot. Both answers are great because if you know what you want to do, we have a very rich, broad, and diverse curriculum. We will get you there. And if you don't know, you will be able to find out. And of those who think they know right now, you might actually change your mind over the next three years. But in any case, let me ask you an easier question now. How many of you want to use your law degree to make the world a better place? Okay, easy, easy. Not all questions are that easy in law school, but that one's an easy one. And we, we will certainly get you there because the International Comparative and Transnational Program at Osgood is second to none. We have the broadest, the richest, the most diverse curriculum, the most comprehensive curriculum in all of Canada, probably all of North America. So let's talk about it a little bit. In the classroom, there are enormous possibilities. You begin when you arrive, not only in the classroom, but in the world, the classroom being the world with uh, Professor Farrow's uh, ethical lawyering in the global, in the global community, uh, where, in which you see your place not only in the profession, but in the world at large, and you see the ethical components of that, and you see, you get a sense for that in a global context. That's an intensive program that you begin with in the fall term and you begin with in the winter program. And then you go on to other 
courses that will launch you into a range of issues, not only in your substantive law courses where there is an international component, but also courses that specialize in international comparative and transnational. There is a stream devoted to that, uh, to that area, international comparative and transnational, and a, an entry-level course called Globalization in the Law that will put you into that if that is your focus. But there are also a range of other courses in the upper years that bring that component of law to life for all of you. Let's just look at a few of them. We have the basic public international law course that was developed by leaders in public international law, including a former judge of the uh, uh, international, uh, sorry, international Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia, um, Her Excellency Sharon Williams, and one of the leading private international lawyers bar none in the world, Professor Jean-Gabriel Castel, my uh, predecessor in private international law, that's international private law, uh, both business and family law um, and international litigation. We have uh, a range of other courses on international trade regulation, immigration law, refugee law, uh, institutions of the European Union, international business transactions, uh, international criminal law, international human rights law, international taxation, you name it, we got it. But as I said in the last program, but wait, there is more. Can't do this all day, you got to call now. But what you will get at Osgood is not only that, but specialized seminars on cutting edge issues like the law of the polar region and the law of war, but also programs abroad, summer abroad programs for our students, for example, the program in Italy, and the program where we take three, we take three weeks with two dozen students to spend time in uh, Jerusalem to see what the world is like from the ground up in that special place. Um, I've been on that program, fabulous program. So has uh, Dean Gavigan, and so is our coming Dean, who will also be at that program, I think to launch his sense for challenges and uh, the world of excitement uh, this summer. So uh, we also have a study, we have not only that, but study abroad programs. If you're interested in spending a term or a year somewhere in some other part of the world, this is the place you launch from. You can be in Amsterdam, you can be in Helsinki, you can be in Bangalore, you can be in Sydney, you can be in so many different places. So if that is not enough, there is also the excitement of the mooting program that Professor Strabopoulos is going to talk about, and I hope, I hope we will also be able to run uh, the, the clip of him on, uh, with Peter Mansbridge as well. But I want to point out two international uh, moots in particular, not only the Jessup, which we've, uh, we've worked on for, for year upon year, but also the uh, International Criminal Tribunal uh, moot and the one that I've been proud to be associated with, the Willem C. Viss International Commercial Arbitration moot, uh, which is the banner, sorry, the banner here just in the corner. I'm so proud of it. I want to point it out to everyone who comes into the moot court. Um, we are every year in Vienna and Hong Kong with our students uh, arguing about issues of international uh, sale of goods law uh, in an international arbitration setting. Fabulous program. Hope to have you with us soon. Uh, thanks, Janet. Now, my colleagues think I don't know how to do what I'm about to do next, and there's a chance that I don't. Uh, but I'm going to give it a shot, and then if I don't, the new guy's going to come and help me. Um, but without further ado, our own favorite rock star, Professor James Terbopoulos. This is a strange introduction. Okay, thank you very much for that, uh, Shelley. <laughs> I'm sure the audience is very puzzled. Uh, no, I, I don't actually um, have a band, uh, despite Shelley's reference. She's referring to this, which she's playing now, uh, which was, ben is oh, Ben is playing now. <laughs> yeah, everyone thinks it's really cool, and I have to say, I, I, I thought it was pretty cool too. Uh, I've been a lifetime fan of Peter Mansbridge, so it was neat to be uh, sitting that close to him. Um, Okay, can we stop it so I can actually say what I'm here to say? Thank you. Uh, so I have the... <laughs> oh, she needs Ben again. 
been getting some ribbing around here, as you might imagine. Um, thank you very much for that very kind introduction. I have the privilege of speaking to you about two areas uh, in the Osgood curriculum that are near and dear to my heart, criminal law and mooting. Um, so let me just start with criminal law, uh, which is the area of my uh, research and, and teaching interests. Um, criminal law is an area that uh, we have uh, a long-standing commitment toward here at Osgood. That commitment is evidenced by the number of faculty we have at the school whose research and teaching is situated uh, in this area. And it's also apparent in the extensive criminal law offerings that you'll find in our JD program that relate to criminal law in the form of introductory and advanced courses on the subject and clinical offerings too. Um, and our program in criminal law allows for a gradual and incremental specialization that culminates really in you becoming an expert in the field if you're so inclined. Um, I was drawn to Osgood some 20 years ago because I was interested in criminal law and I've never regretted that decision. And if you're interested in criminal law, this is the place to be. We have more courses uh, both uh, and seminars in this area than arguably any other law school in the country. Uh, we start you out in the first year with uh, the basic introductory course in criminal law, and everyone has that. Uh, we have fantastic faculty who teach it. Uh, you can then take uh, some of the uh, upper year courses that are uh, a, a stepping stone towards some of the more advanced uh, study. So there's criminal procedure, there's evidence, there's international criminal law, and the progression continues. Uh, and here's where the, the breadth of the offerings really becomes apparent. We have a, a, a course that focuses on sentencing. We have a course that focuses on ethics in criminal law. We have a course that focuses on the law of homicide. We have another course that focuses on the, the law of, of, of sexual uh, offenses. We have a course on forensic sciences in the law, uh, the history of criminal law, uh, international criminal law at the ICC and litigation uh, in that court, the International Criminal Court, is the subject matter of another course. We have a, a course, uh, actually a seminar, uh, on the philosoph philosophical foundations of criminal law. So if you're, if, if you're someone who's interested in legal theory and criminal law, that's ideal. Um, and then from a practical standpoint, we have, for those who are interested in litigating cases, the trial advocacy program, which is great, not just for those interested in criminal law, but also for uh, those interested in civil litigation too. It's, it's just an invaluable hands-on learning by doing experience so that when you, you know, learn how to examine and cross-examine a witness, uh, it doesn't come at the expense of an actual client. That learning experience happens here in the confines of the law school. And then for those who are interested in criminal law, that progression continues and, the, and it sort of culminates in a couple of our clinical law, uh, clinical uh, programs, uh, our offerings that Professor Farrow was making mention of before. We have the criminal intensive program, uh, which has been in existence for over 30 years. And when you look at the who's who of the criminal bar in this province, I'd say uh, you, you'd be hard pressed not to find um, uh, 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 people who are uh, distinguished in that field who aren't graduates of Osgood and aren't actually, more specifically, people who've come through the criminal intensive program, which is an externship that sends you out into the legal community, that pairs you up with a prosecutor, a defense lawyer, uh, a judge, uh, that has you sort of watch the system in action learn by doing and then come back to the law school and reflect on it under the supervision of the course direction, directors, the program directors. And uh, there's also uh, another uh, clinical offering that sort of uh, is, is the culmination of learning in criminal law if you're so inclined, and that's the Innocence Project, which is run by our colleague, uh, Professor Alan Young, who I'm sure many of you know of. Um, he's he's uh, arguably uh, the, one of the most famous members of our faculty, and that's because he, he has made it his passion to take on uh, important cases in the public interest on a pro bono basis over the last 25 years, most recently in the prostitution cases that uh, he has spearheaded in challenging the law on behalf of sex trade workers, uh, which is clearly headed towards the Supreme Court. He, he was instrumental in that. He argued that case and he involved a number of our students in the preparation and in the work that went into making that claim successful at the trial level. Um, it's on reserve at the Court of Appeal at the moment. So that's what we have to offer in terms of criminal law. It's really unparalleled. And the proof is, I think, uh, in the bar itself, which we draw on, by the way, the criminal bar here, 
Uh, one of the reasons we're able to offer the breadth of uh, courses that we do in criminal law is because we have many alumni who are criminal lawyers who come here and uh, give up their time to teach our students. And the proof is in the pudding. If, when you look at you know, who the leading members of the criminal bar are today, most of them are Osgood graduates. And I, I love to hold up this a copy of our alumni magazine from a few years back that features a number of our uh, distinguished uh, graduates uh, who focus uh, their efforts on criminal law. And they're recognized as the leading uh, criminal lawyers in, in the province, if not the country. Um, and the, the, the title of this edition, uh, it's headed Criminal Law at Osgood, Why We've Earned Bragging Rights. And the people featured on the far left, you can't see them. There's uh, John Rosen, Osgood graduate, Marlis Edward, Austin Cooper, uh, Maybe some of these names aren't names you'll, you know yet. You'll know them soon. The next two, I'm sure you will recognize. Brian Greenspan and Eddie Greenspan. They all graduated from Osgood, and um, I think that's uh, a uh, reflective of the fact that we have such strength in this area. Now for mooting. You're probably wondering, what is mooting? Um, it's not a term that you've heard before you sort of enter uh, the legal world. So mooting is just a way that we describe simulated lawyering exercises and competitions. And um, these banners are from competitions that we've sent students to representing Osgood at uh, and uh, that we've succeeded in um, uh, bringing home the championship with respect to. And um, as some of the, the, the banners reflect the, the uh, subject matter that is the focus of these sorts of uh, lawyering skills competitions can vary from um, every area of the law, from Aboriginal law, administrative law, corporate, criminal, constitutional, environmental, international, labor tax, intellectual property and securities law, you name it. Um, if, there's a, if there's an area of substantive law that you're interested in, you're, you're keen on learning by doing, mooting's a great way to do that, and we have so much to offer. And it's not just going outside of the school to compete against other schools. Uh, we, we nurture and, and, and um, develop our students who ultimately go off to compete for us through a number of intramural programs that deal with lawyering skills. Um, so we have a number of moots that just take place within the school itself. Uh, we have other lawyering competitions of the same kind in the sense that it's not all about mooting, I appellate advocacy, uh, students arguing an appeal in front of a panel of judges. That's usually what we talk about when we talk about mooting. Some of the other lawyering skills competitions include co client counseling, negotiation competitions, arbitration competitions, trial advocacy, so simulated trials as opposed to appeals, um, and, and, and the list goes on. We've got a lot to offer here at Osgood in that respect, and you can see that we've been pretty successful at it. So if you're keen on learning by doing, then mooting something you'll be interested in our lawyering skills. Uh, competitions are second to none. I suspect with the associate dean looming behind me that my time is far up. Thank you. Looming, looming, such a verb. Um, so uh, the uh, 12 o'clock is actually looming, uh, but we have a few minutes if you have questions. Anyone has a question? Seeing none. Oh, seeing one. I'd be happy to do that, and I hope you'll stay for the next section because we are actually going to talk about the first year program, the first year courses uh, in the next. That's a great section. You're thinking ahead. Good for you. <laughs> yep, yeah, in the back. Who, uh, when does someone go about applying for the international exchanges? Uh, when does uh, one go about applying for the international exchanges? They're upper year programs, and so you, the uh, application can be made in the winter term of your first year for the uh, following year, or it can be made in the winter term of your second year for your third year. So you, we do not release you into an unsuspecting world in first year. We hang on to you. Was there a question? Did you have a question? It's okay. In the back, yeah. Hi, I was just wondering, what kind of um, courses do you have regarding um, health-related aspects of law? Health law? So the question is about health law. We have, uh, that's a great question, and as I, s I hope I said at the beginning, we haven't been, we, we're only giving you a slice of what we offer here in the areas of public law, private law, intensive programs, of criminal law, mooting. We have a very strong presence in health law and disability law. And Professor Joan Gilmore is a um, 
really regarded as one of our uh, one of the leading scholars in the area of health law uh, in Canada. So she teaches first year torts, and so she'll introduce you uh, to some uh, health law issues uh, in first year torts. She teaches an upper year uh, seminar in health law and an upper year course uh, in the area of legal governance uh, of healthcare. And then as well, she is she shares with another colleague, uh, Professor Roxanne McKidiak, a course in disability and the law. Uh, she's also the, after you graduate, she's also the uh, director of our, our part-time Masters of Law program in health law. And, and Shelley, also some of, the, some of the issues cross over into other areas, so some of the clinical programs will be doing, will be doing disability work for certain clients and what have you, so the, um, in, a, in a, a sort of a learn by doing kind of setting. Thank you, great question. Any other questions? Well, with that, thank you for your very kind attention. We're going to you'll join me in thanking the uh, panelists. And we're just going to transition quite quickly. You can stretch maybe, uh, get a juice, and we'll start with the next session on the first year program uh, right now, or in a minute.